How's it going everybody? My name is Coda and welcome back to another episode in my survival world. Now, if you're wondering where I'm standing and this build doesn't look familiar to you, maybe you should go check out my last episode. But today's episode, I've got an actual build plan today, so it won't be as adventurous as it was last episode. And you might have seen it from the thumbnail and the video title, but today we're going to be building a haunted mansion. Just in time for Halloween. So if you're as excited as I am for some spooky vibes, be sure to stick around and I hope you enjoy today's episode. We're not gonna just build a haunted mansion, okay? That wouldn't be near as fun as what I have planned. No, instead what we're gonna do is we're going to be crazy and be extremely ambitious with this project. So if you remember from the first episode, we have this skeleton spawner down here. It's like directly below here. The spawner is like maybe in that direction a little bit. So my thoughts is we create a haunted mansion, not here, but there, inside the ground. Yeah, a little ambitious. But uh, when I thought of the concept, I honestly, I, I really wanted to do it. Anybody can just stick a building on top of a spawner and call it good. So I thought doing this kind of a project would be extremely unique and a lot of fun to undertake. And I'm kind of under a time crunch here, so this might be like the absolutely worst thing that I could do. But, you know, it's spooky season. I'm feeling the spooky vibes, the haunted mansion. I really want to do one. And I've got about a week until Halloween comes out, so it's really time to start working on this project. So from about right here, I want you to look through and see underneath this ground in a, like a crack almost that's created by this mansion and then just down there very ominously sitting that mansion that we're going to create. I think this has some great potential and I'm really excited to start working on this project and I think it's going to be a lot of fun. But it's also going to be a lot of work because we have a whole lot of digging to do. So rather than chit chat, I'm going to start digging. Woo! So exciting. <clears throat> and um, totally, totally by coincidence, we defeated a wither last episode, meaning we have a nether star in our possession. And you know what you can do with a nether star? You can create a beacon. Oh yeah, and uh, by the way, I organized my entire ender chest, which I've never done it this way, so this is kind of like a trial run to see how it goes, but so far I'm liking it. It kind of, it provides me with the ability to have every single block at my disposal so i don't have to like run back and forth from my storage system whenever i think of a block i want to use so we'll put it to the test during this build and i'm fairly certain i'm going to keep it like this for a while and there is our first beacon achievement and the first Haste of the world. Oh, no. There we go. Alright, game plan. So, without this thing getting super low, I think we're going to put the base of the mansion around that block, which is Y55. And we're at Y70-ish right now. So, if the mansion ends up coming up a lot higher than we expected, we can always just terraform. Because that is always an option. And we're going to pick up plenty of blocks, so it won't be that difficult to terraform. But I think best case of action is going to be building the mansion first and then the sight line for it. Because we kind of have a lot of tricky terrain to work with here. And if we try and build the sight line first, we might have to readjust it a lot. And I think that'll just waste a lot of our time. And like I said earlier, we don't have much time to do this. Halloween is like a week away and I need to get this episode out. So we're going to try building this mansion first. But of course, to build the mansion, we kind of need space to build the mansion. So... Back to what I said a couple minutes ago, we're going to terraform.
Now that we've got the outline fully finished, we can start placing those resources that we just collected. It's going to be hard showing you the full outline right now because obviously I'm not going to punch all the way into this wall just to show you what the outline looks like. We'll carve this out later once we actually finish the mansion. But for now, you guys can get a picture of what it's going to look like. And obviously it's not fully outlined to the back of it because the cave or the ravine walls or whatever it is is going to be hugging this thing really tightly. So we don't really need to detail that far back into the build itself, which is great because no one likes doing the backs of builds. But now that I've got these resources gathered up and some bits of detail I want to throw in, it's time to actually start placing the blocks. And this is where we're at now. So I dug out a little bit here so we could actually step back and view the mansion. And this will kind of give you a feel of how I want you to look at it. So the goal, remember, is to create like a sight line or a line of path that we could see the mansion in. And it's at like the end of this very long cave or ravine type thing. The way that it's laid out right now looks pretty ominous. Of course, we need to like darken the windows and make them feel all foggy if we can or just black them out with some black stone or something. And then, of course, we still need the surrounding cave. But right now, I believe the aesthetic of like a haunted mansion kind of comes together. And of course we used a lot of like cooler tone blocks and lots of darker grays and then we contrasted it with the red and i know i use mangrove a lot but it's just such a beautiful wood and it goes really good with all these cool tones the only thing i don't like is that whenever you're from down at this angle or anywhere head on it you can't really see the sides of those two upper bits there so it kind of feels like they're just like standalone pieces so either we make them go back further in the wall or hopefully that issue gets resolved when we actually get the cave in place. But now in terms of like balance of the build, I really wanted to try and make it feel like centrally balanced. That way, whenever you are looking at the mansion, your eyes are just drawn into the center bit here. And of course, into the, the front door, which is kind of where all the ominous vibes are from. And so with it getting darker here, you can kind of see how it's gonna be lit. And I think if we, we'll have to play around with the lighting a lot to try and bring attention to that front door there. And we'll have to do a lot with the pathway coming down and make sure that it actually like feels like everything is just flowing into this one spot right here. And then of course, this is the center of the drop down, which yes, this entire mansion is going to be just for a skeleton farm that I don't even use anymore, but it's more about the vibes and the, the fun creative idea that I had for it. And of course it's spooky season. So we really, we have to build, we're obligated to build a spooky mansion on top of our spooky scaly spotter. I mean, come on. But so now getting back on the topic of balance, I think if we added a little jut out piece, kind of like those ones right in that area, it would help balance it a lot more, but that's something we can always do in the future if, it, if we really feel like we need it. Because right now it does feel like it's really heavy on this side, but the weight in the back here kind of helps balance it out. So I'm still deciding. Now that we have some of those cave walls I was talking about, you can kind of get the sense of what the shading is going to be. Of course, we need to add some highlight pieces here and there, but that'll come once we actually finish the rest of the cave. And I think the direction that I'm going to take this is having more of like an open cavern and then a narrower pathway. That way we don't have to dig out as much. I still want you to be able to see the mansion along the pathway, but I don't think it's going to be quite as carved out as I was initially planning on. And that's really just because we don't have a lot of space up there and it's really far down. But we are going to keep this hole in the center so that we can give the central like focal point of this build some highlights. And that way also if we need to fly in and out we can do that easily without having to go up the path and out. And with that, we have finished this cave. Now, I'm not going to do much in terms of texturizing the wall, simply because I want all of the focus to be on the mansion itself. And if you notice, I put in two trees here and here, 
and the tuff is supposed to be kind of like a petrified dead wood type thing and i think it kind of sets the atmosphere a little bit better and of course once we come in with our final details that'll also help create this spooky atmosphere and if you can see up there we got a little bit of tendrils from the trees poking out like there's some growing back there and i really wanted it to feel like the trees were kind of reaching out and trying to like grab at the house and kind of encompass it and then this tree here also kind of fixes that balance issue that we had where it was too much on this side now it kind of feels well rounded and almost perfect the only thing it does do is block out that window but i don't think it's that big of a deal but now final steps are going to be finishing this ground here because of course it is a cave but i don't want it to be stone or anything like that we're going to go in with some dirt and some gross groundy bits and make it look more dead than a cave and we're going to add some little plant life with that coral that we found as well as some random details here and there i also might change up the hole up there a little bit might make it smaller uh, I don't know, I'm still toying around with some ideas with that. And now, the mansion is complete. You know, I really love the floating candles everywhere. I feel like it makes this feel more magical in a way. And I went and put around these nether warts to make it feel like there was just like this red plant life growing down here. And threw in a little bit of a grave underneath this tree with a skeleton head, which I thought was pretty cool. And then over here just added some floating candles around. Now at nighttime, this looks really cool looking and it even highlights some candles that I put back there. If you can kind of see their warm glow, I only put two candles per group of candles because it creates this very nice soft lighting where anything more than those or like say a piece of glow lichen or something was just too much light. I'm going to wait for the sun to go down and I'll show you guys what it looks like then. And now that the sun is setting, you can see a lot more of the lighting that I set up in the back there. That lighting just provides a nice little warm highlight for the back of it, and it kind of gives you a sense of the depth. And in a way, it kind of makes it feel like it's even further back than it is. But I think this build really shines at nighttime. And I also experimented with closing off the skylight, and it was way too dark to be able to put in a YouTube video. And it does look cool, and it does work, but I don't think it works in this case. And with the exterior finished, it's time we work on this hallway. And almost as if by magic, this hallway has been completed. I tried to go for as much of an ominous vibe as I could, and with the limited space we had, this is the result. And I really hope it comes out well in the YouTube video, because these candles don't provide a lot of light, but it does look incredible. And of course, we did all of this just to pull this into our skeleton spawner which we might need to update now to kind of match the vibe that we have going upstairs. And it's very likely that we won't ever use the skeleton spawner again, but it is a good source of bone meal, so there's a chance we'll be back. Really, the whole point of this build was just an excuse to do a haunted mansion, which we exceeded in completing. I also came through and added a bit more details with the cobwebs, and then I also remembered the dead coral that I collected and threw that into some places on the wall, and also some dead coral fans here and there. But other than that, I think that's this build wrapped up. Now that we have the interior finished, the exterior is all complete. The one last thing we have to do is up there. Which, of course, is terraforming this mess. Mm-hmm. Looks almost as if nothing happened. And now for our last order of business, we're going to put a field right there. Not just any field. Another wart field. Because, you know, spooky plants, red plants, in other words, are pretty spooky, spooky season, spooky episode, you get the idea. One day, one day you'll grow into a massive field. Not today, though. Now with this field taken care of, it's time we wrap up today's episode. It's been a fun one, and I really hope you guys enjoyed today's build. I certainly had a lot of fun putting this one together. It was a bit outside of my comfort zone and where I'm used to building, and I feel like this concept was really fun to explore and build into. And of course, this episode is coming out right before Halloween, so hopefully it gets to y'all in time and you get to enjoy this spooky episode during the spookiest time of the year. But with that being said, it's time for me to end today's episode. Again, I really hope you all enjoyed, and I hope you have an awesome day.